perfect okay so i want to add to some things that um i was talking about on yesterday uh some components like that will help you on your journey of manifesting help you on your journey of connecting to your higher self and tapping into the super conscious mind all knowing infinite intelligence god the universe whatever you call it so like I said, uh, I have some bullet points that I wrote down earlier today that I wanted to share. So if I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. First of all, spiritual laws is what I wrote down. Now, you don't have to know all of them, but looking back hindsight, just me generally speaking, it, had helped, it has helped me tremendously on my journey. You don't have to know all of them, but just having a general idea that there are laws that govern this physical reality. Like you, I'm sure you all know already about the law of attraction, right? The law of assumption, you know, the law of polarity, the law of ginger, gender, I said ginger, <laughs> the law of gender and um, the law of cause and effect. And the reason why it is a good thing to know of these is because further along your journey in the physical reality, you'll realize that they are not two powers. In the physical reality, when you are in the physical, like I always use to see a little um, backdrop I have, when you are in the physical, this here split right here, these two sides, you, you look at everything for the two sides. You look at black people and you look at white people. You look at, you know, different seasons, you know. You look at up, down. You look at hot, cold. You look at God devils, per se, right? But when you go further along in your consciousness, you realize that, oh, no, that was an illusion of separation. There was really one source, one power. God is all, right? And so that's why it's really good to know spiritual laws because in understanding or knowing the spiritual laws, you could understand that because you have cause and effect, right? Another uh, law, you have um, the law of polarity. That means all things are two sides. And with knowing another law, the law of gender, you know that there's male, there must be male and there must be female principles. So when you start embarking upon spiritual laws, it really open up your mind about how how even your thoughts work, you know, that your thoughts are going out and they're going to go out and attract your desire or your fears, right? So it breaks down some things. So I feel like that's one component that was really an eye opener for me in my journey. The next one is actually religion. <laughs> and I say religion because of the simple fact that Religion in the biblical text is really all about you and they also have two sides in that religious book You know, they have the old contract and the new contract or what we know as the Old Testament and then the New Testament, right? <laughs> and so like for example, Old Testament talk about, you know, certain foods, you know, stay away from You know, the pork and the bottom feeders. I think it's in the book of Leviticus. They talk about that there None of the church people that I ever seen in the physical reality abide by that, you know, in the Baptist church, you know, maybe the Muslims or whatever they did, the pork, you know, abstain from that. Anyway, in the Baptist church, they had the suppers and they ate all of those different things, believing more into the New Testament, or maybe not wanting to change their ways, but in the New Testament or the new contract, they were saying, you know, when Jesus came into the scene, it was like, bless your food, you know, just, just bless your food. All is God. So even in the old Testament and new Testament, it kind of tells you the two sides of everything, right? The old Testament and new Testament. But it also says in that biblical text, there's so many hidden Jews up in there. It also tells you in that biblical text, well, wait, hold up. There's one God, one faith, one baptism and so you can start looking at those scriptures and in one day in your in your in your mind you'll begin to renew it and realize that there is one source and it goes back to what i was saying there are not two different powers here religious people you know they might believe in that so-called devil and god or whatever but if you really back up and you really look at what the christ conscious one was saying he would say no 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 when you see me, you see the Father. 
because I, he or it, that energy was tapped into the superconscious. So that's the second thing. Um, I feel like religion was really a, a very important component in the journey for you to have that aha moment and realize what really is going on in the physical reality as far as the illusion of separation is concerned. The next thing I would say that was a good, important uh, component in my journey is having a childlike imagination. And that's really going to help you with manifestations, you know, because even in the biblical text, we could go back to that. I remember a parable that says, if you do not come to God as a child, you won't make it into the kingdom in so many words. So what does it, what is a child like? A child has that that imagination, you know, that a child has that imaginary friend. A child feels like they are invincible until, you know, the parents constantly take that 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 from them by their limited beliefs, saying, No, you you can't fly, no, you you can't you really can't do that, da, 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 da. no, you're gonna hurt yourself and all of these limited beliefs that we sometimes as parents project on our children, it kind of like dumbs them down because they come from infinite intelligence, all knowing, ready to do, be, and have anything, but constantly being told no and, and you know, obey and listen and sit down and this and that and the third, you know, they kind of like dwindle down to being that human, having that human experience instead of staying connected to source and feeling immortal and invincible and powerful like we really really are nonetheless that imagination really is helpful and even in the biblical text it says um my people are destroyed from the lack of of knowledge and and where there is no vision the people perish and so that has everything to do with the thought process where your mind wanders because even with meditation a lot of people don't want to meditate or can't in the beginning and feel like they want to give up because they don't have the attention span that is necessary and so then they'll think maybe that it's not working but it really is even if you just do it at short increments it's something that you build upon so that's number three um imagination and so I'm talking about this here, but you, I really stumbled upon later in my journey that it wasn't just renewing this one mind, my thinking. So I'm going to separate it as far as how I see it. So we have, we have like a subconscious mind, we have the conscious mind, and we have super conscious mind. I am sharing with you the benefits of renewing the subconscious mind because everything that's go that you see in your physical reality that is happening is coming from those habitual thoughts that that are um that are penetrated deep enough to show up in your physical reality because they penetrated into your subconscious mind, your subconscious state of being. So in relation to the biblical text when it says he restores my soul the soul the seed of the soul is that subconscious mind that i'm talking about and so on the spiritual journey that's what we're doing here we're restoring our soul or our subconscious mind we're renewing it because we've been dumbed down a little bit you know in the physical reality by parents by by friends by our fears maybe by all kind of out outside things that we absorbed when maybe we was a baby from some type of trauma or whatever so we've been dumbed down a little bit and just dumbed down just by having a human experience knowing that you came forth from infinite intelligence to this state of being that's just a dumbed down process in itself even if you had you know open-minded parents so the subconscious mind is really your universe when i'm talking about the universe i'm talking about your subconscious mind when I'm talking about restoring your soul, I'm talking about your subconscious mind because this is what the whole journey is all about. And so it would benefit us if we program our own subconscious mind by different things, by, by words, by um, repeating certain things. You know, this is where affirmations come to play at um, certain sound and pictures. And this is why like spiritual people, they don't really watch television and stuff like I don't watch TV. Like we don't, you know, most of us don't watch the news. I don't do that, you know, because we understand that 
The subconscious mind is never sleeping and it's always absorbing information, right? And so I want to share before I go, because I'm not going to be here long, that there are ways that you can program. You know how people say, you know, the TV is programming you. There's ways you could program your subconscious mind since it's always on and it's always listening by you deciding what type of music that you're going to listen to. By you listening to affirmations that resonate with you that you know about prosperity or whatever it is that you're wanting about love about success about healing wherever you are in your journey for your desires and so you want to listen to those things that resonate with you that doesn't appear to be a lie to your subconscious mind so say for example you are sick and you're listening to an affirmation that says i am wellness I am healthy. Well, your subconscious mind knows that that is a lie. So a tool right there that you could use since your subconscious mind know when you lying, cause it's going to say, it's going to give you a thought. Well, the doctor didn't say you was healthy. So what you can do to lighten that blow, instead of saying, I am healthy, you could ask the subconscious mind, which is your soul, the seat of your soul, infinite intelligence. What does it feel like? to be healthy. Show me health and wellness. And that way you're not contradicting how you feel. You're telling it, you're giving it a command so it can show you so you can still get into that good feeling state so you could attract that particular feeling. So anyway, I'm almost done here. Wait, I didn't watch the news either. I don't watch the news either. Yeah, they say the kids should be seen. Uh, yeah, they say kids should be seen, not her. You right about that. Yeah, we. And that's why I'm so um, particular about how I raise my children because of that old school way of thinking. It was so many limited beliefs there. Let's see, Will Smith should have Hank out. Hank out slapped that one pride man who tried to kiss him. <laughs> oh, okay. That's funny. Spiritual laws. Yes, definitely. Tell him what to do during the waiting process. Okay, we'll get to that. What are the laws called again so I can write it down? The ones that I just mentioned, you could Google it. The ones that I mentioned was the law of cause and effect, the law of assumption, the law of gender, the law of attraction, and the law of polarity. It's just good to generally know them. And they're really short. Just, um, just um, Google it and you'll be able to find it easily. So back to programming the mind. So you know how TV programs our mind. So you always, well, we always have our cell phone. My cell phone is actually the camera, but this is an old phone that I have. So to program some little tips here to program your subconscious mind, you want to program it by things that you repetitively look at. So we always on our cell phone, like, right? We always maybe logging in to um, a computer or maybe have a password to uh, maybe our banking or, you know, checking savings account or whatever. And so let's see, we're always driving, maybe going to work or whatever. So those are the perfect moments where you could program your subconscious mind by showing it pictures that you want it to see. Like I'm going to show y'all my screen. I don't know if y'all be able to see here. Let me see. On my uh, my backup cell phone of abundance. So you see this here? This is like my home screen. Oh, my phone dirty. Don't y'all talk about my phone. That's my phone. It's not it. <laughs> but anyway, you see that? So if you constantly looking at abundance, you know, you could put your um, screen saver to be like maybe a fit person if you're trying to look for health and wellness. If you're looking for a partner, you know, what, why your picture gotta be on your screen saver, save, saver? You know, put the picture of the person that you're trying to manifest or draw to you. Uh, put the picture of, you know, money, cash flow, whatever works for you because every time you're looking at it, your subconscious mind is not sleep, right? Even your ringtone, somebody sent me a clip yesterday. They have this uh, viral post of, um, you know, the sound that says money comes to me easily, money comes to me fast, when money comes, it lasts or something like that. 
Well, you could actually have that as your ringtone, things like that. Or your ringtone could be your your voice. Like if you if you're sick or whatever, you know, you you could have a ringtone and it could say, I am health and wellness. You know, I am an eternal being. I surrender to the universe or whatever you want, especially in your voice. Because like I say, the subconscious mind is not sleeping. So that's another tool that you can use to help to reprogram the subconscious mind. And I talked about, you know, we us always logging into computers. Well, you can set up a password as an affirmation. You know how they say, um, you know, it has to be at least eight characters. You know, it have to have a capital letter, then it have to have like some type of sim symbol or um, special character or whatever. Well, you can put, you know, if you're trying to be like um, maybe married or something, want a partner, like a capital A, um, a wife, a wife in 2013 with an explanation point, that could point behind it. That could be a, you know, password, you know, a... Uh, uh, a fine man 2023 you know something like that and that way you got your capital you got your explanation part but at the same time every time you're typing it in to log into the computer you know your password and your bank or whatever you have this you're repeating this and it's being downloaded into your subconscious mind because that's how your beliefs got up there a beliefs is nothing but something that you told yourself over and over again and now when you're entering your password you're telling yourself that over and over okay 2023 is my year for abundance or whatever your password is it's my year for my my health you know because that's my password and because i'm saying that over and over and it's a habitual thought now it's becoming a habitual thought so it must come forth in your physical reality those are the those are the things that come forth the things that are up here in the subconscious mind even even your ringtone could say if you if you sick you could have a ringtone saying i am immortal you know like just confidently knowing so you could be stimulating the subconscious mind because it's not sleeping it's all everything you see here is was was in your subconscious mind before and it's manifested so these are actually right now today your old thoughts that was in your subconscious mind now if you renew your mind today your tomorrow is going to be renewed by what's in your subconscious mind today. So I wanted to give you those particular um, tips. But most importantly, remember that there are not two different powers. Remember, God, source energy <laughs> is two-sided. That reigns on the just as well as the unjust because it's one. Is there's one God, one faith, one baptism? A lot of people, you know, in the conscious community, don't want to embark on this part of the journey because of the melanin, because of the dark matter. And I get it, I get it, and it sounds really good because I'm black, and you know, it sounds amazing. I've studied it, but if you go and press, 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 press on, all is God. All is God. It's, it's like a little bit further you, you gotta go and you and you and you and you're learning because we're forever students a little bit more evolving to do because all is god having a human experience and but here's the trick part about the the mind though here's the trick part about the mind if in your mind you don't want to believe that if you choose that to believe that the blue eyed bean is the devil per se if the that the blue eyed bean is soulless or whatever you want to call the blue eyed bean if you choose to believe that so shall it be and that blue eyed bean gonna always being gonna always be the devil to you and that blue eyed bean gonna always come forward i'm telling you something that i know that i've experienced from myself that blue eyed being gonna be that police officer that's gonna pull your ways over. That blue eyed being gonna be your insurance man. He gonna be the judge. He gonna be everybody just because that's your belief. And you believe in it and you create in it. You create your reality. And that blue eyed being gonna give you some hell because that's what you created him to be in your mind. And those people that sit there and talk about how, how racism, you know, is so bad all the time and they got to fight against everything that you're fighting against, you creating a resistance from. You're telling your subconscious mind basically, hey, give me more. 
Give me more because I think this thing here is two-sided. Give me more. I'm still confused. I'm still lost in the sauce. Give me more. I read the Old Testament, New Testament. I saw that they had two sides, but give me more. I, I don't believe that it's just one. No, I'm not going to believe that now. And it, that's what the universe is going to give you more and more, but you're just going to have different characters. So I'm sharing these tools with you all for you to be empowered, to realize at the end of the day that you're God. And once you get to that state of knowing you can be, do, or have anything, and then you realize realize that you're limitless, you're eternal, <laughs> you're powerful, you do not die, your, your soul lives on, and you can have confidence in your physical reality, and you can sit there, be still, and draw things to you. And that feels so amazing. That feels so amazing to be connected with source energy. <laughs> and then you too, just like in the biblical text, like Jesus, the Christ one said, you too can say, when you see me, you see the father. <laughs> I think that is so beautiful. I think that is so beautiful. And I'm hopeful that you all can hear and understand those that have ears to understand this level. You know, because, you know, everybody set the alarm clock to wake up to consciousness, you know, at their own season. But those that you can hear man this is this is this is exciting this is this is beautiful this is what we came for for going on the days where we dumb down to five and ten percent of brain capacity we have evolved we have evolved into the new age to the new to the new season and i'm i'm, I'm so hopeful and thankful that that we're here and i just want to be able to share this that i've gone through in my that i've studied in research to be true for me and i'm not trying to project what's true for me to be true for you but i just want to open up your mind and for you to find your own truth maybe just find your truth because it is there and it is so factual that the truth you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free boy it sure sets you free it's set, it sets your mind free it sets your heart free you know and who, who, how they say who the lord and when i when i hear the word law in the biblical text that's another thing i turn it to law because it's really talking about the law the law who the law sets free ha, is free indeed <laughs> oh my goodness i think this is so beautiful i get excited about stuff like this so oh lord the comments just jump let's see hey queen i didn't know you was here it's beautiful how you intertwine the biblical text. You evolved it for me. You respect the scriptures. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Dre. Hey, you back again? Yeah, this is my last day this week, Dre. I was trying to do three times a week. I did Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, so I'm doing good. I don't normally come on this, this many times. This is so beautiful. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I definitely believe it all works together. Yeah, I do too. Wow, I love that. Never thought of it like that. Yeah. Some of my co-workers talk to me and I hear nothing. They call me weird. That's okay, baby. I'm pretty sure a lot of people call me weird too. But guess what? It's not who they say you are. It's who do you say I am? Remember that from the biblical text? <laughs> who do men say I am? Well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. No, 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 no. But who do you say I am? I don't watch the news, the news either. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was just checking. Uh-oh. What I did? Uh oh, I hit the wrong button. Let me push that. Okay. Yeah, so I was just checking to see if um they had any questions and jumping on here to share that little piece so I could add it to my YouTube channel so I could be a blessing to other people. Because really this is just like me talking to me because you all of my reflections is like me leaving little little um videos in my little diary, you know, me sharing my experience with myself because in me I, I look at it like this here, you're all that exists in your physical reality. And so when you blessing other people in your physical reality, you really just blessing yourself. <laughs> and and if you could take it personal like that and it, your physical reality will be filled with more abundance and love for life you know you could find the good in all things and you could begin to see people through the eyes of god and you could understand that so-called bad that you might think is bad is still working out for you for your good anyway because maybe maybe you had to have that argument with that particular person today you know maybe you had to have the, the you know the person that passed by you with the road rage whatever maybe when they passed you got up in the other lane and, and you it, it, it detoured you from getting into an accident it is always look at the good baby it is always working out 
for your good. Because you can look back at different relationships and situations that you were in years ago and you know that you learned from it. Because we're only learning and winning. You can look at that old relationship, the one that maybe you cried about years ago, and you could be like, man, because of that relationship, it taught me communication skills, you know. It taught me, you know, how to maybe be more attentive in a relationship. It really just was showing you you and so showing you parts of you that maybe you could, you know, there's room for improvement on. And so since I improved from that particular relationship, look at me now. Look at me now in a healthier relationship. Look at the woman or the man that I have become in my right now moment so that relationship that i thought back then was was that actually it worked out for my good actually it made me realize that i needed to learn to love me first i needed to put me first i had to i needed to have a life before i became a wife i needed to date myself you know i needed to know how to please myself you know man i'm telling you everything even if it's death per se, everything is working out for you good. Because even with death, death has a way of triggering the person who's still in the physical reality to want to become more conscious, want to do something with their life, and, and at the same time, want to learn more about spirituality because that person that they love is in another parallel reality. And so now they want to get closer to that particular source in order to be able to communicate or feel the presence or feel the love or feel the warmth from that particular loved one and know that that loved one is on the other side and is all is well with them. So even death has a way of working out for your good because once you get over that so-called grieving process, you really look at that person that left and that left you behind as maybe your angel, as maybe your ancestor, and then maybe you become more spiritual and now you waking up. <laughs> so baby, it's all working out for your good you just gotta keep on waking up and you gotta keep on having faith and you gotta keep on canceling that fear because fear should not exist fear is a stumbling block fear is that if i can call anything the so-called devil i will call the devil fear the emotion of fear if you want to call something the devil, it's the lowest frequency. It will get you nowhere because God has not given you the spirit of fear, but that which of love and power and a sound mind. And you have to tap into the love, power and sound mind in order to quicken your DNA to be like the Christ conscious one in order for your blood to be renewed. This is why in the biblical text, the first healing of the Christ conscious one was that of turning water into wine because his DNA was being altered inside of him at a cellular level in order to become that's why he was saying don't you know i have not it is not my season yet so to speak i have not gone ascended so to speak to the father when someone was asking him to to to, to perform a miracle ahead of his time so that is like a pivotal moment where you have to cancel out the fear and walk on the faith walk on the power and the knowing <laughs> walk and renew that 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 soul that subconscious mind Okay, let's see. I get excited, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get excited. Do you have any videos about balancing masculine and feminine energy? Mm. Mm. I might. I got a lot of videos on my um, YouTube um, channel. I talked a lot about uh, relationships. Um, uh, I think I do. I think I do. But you know what? To be honest with you, then that was that was during a moment when I was like talking about relationships and dating or whatever and talking about feminine energy and how to be um, graceful and you know how to be mysterious and things like that on my YouTube channel. But um, <laughs> like we were saying here, all really is God, just vibrating at a, a different frequency. And oftentimes now that I have evolved from even with the feminine and the masculine energy principle, God vibrates at any frequency. And as long as you're looking at people through the eyes of God and viewing yourself through the eyes of God, which is really most important so that you won't be, have those people that are looking at you as if you're not too feminine or not too masculine. All of us have both feminine and masculine principles inside of us. It is necessary for survival, you know? So in balancing it, <laughs> I would say, I would say just as long as you have that heart healed, because 
it's no such thing really to be honest with you as too much of no masculine or too much of no feminine you be what you want to be remember back to like i said i am who i say i am but the only reason why i would say to balance the matters of the heart is because sometimes when some people are in the physical reality and they're leaning toward like if i was leaning toward just exuding so much of masculine energy it could be because i'm covering up the fact that daddy wasn't there the fact that i may have gotten molested by a man and now i don't want no man to touch me it could be some trauma deeply rooted in there so balancing it would be opening up that heart chakra in order for that sacred chakra pool of energy to clear from all of the trauma that you've been through. But if it's not no trauma per se, you just, you know, that type of lady who just want, you know, like, look, I work in a warehouse or whatever and I wear my dickies or whatever and that's what I want to do and I don't have no trauma. Be who you are and love who you are as is. And forget about the masculine and feminine as it, as it obtains to that because all is God having a human experience. Just like they say in the biblical text, you know, when they were asking about giving and taking off to, to marriage or whatever in the text, it was like, there's no marriage in the kingdom. <laughs> and so we're in human form right now where the illusion of male and female exists, where the illusion of separation and the illusion that we are humans and I'm black and, and I'm a mother. But when you really tap into source, it's just energy, energy, frequency and vibration. So live your best life. <laughs> is what I would say. You just make sure that that heart chakra is balanced. That you could put a feather up there, like they talk about in my yacht, and it you could put that heart to be weighed on the scale, and it'll be as light as a feather. You do that, and you won't have to worry about no masculine, and feminine, you no black, no white, no none of that, because you in, <laughs> you in, because love heals all, baby. Love heals all. Let's see. Yeah, you're wearing the soup of God with your earrings. Yeah, sacred geometry. Yeah, I love these earrings. That's why I held on to them for so long. How do you suggest to open a heart chakra? By meditation, by knowing, it's a knowing that you are love and that you are lovable and you carry love with you. It's not about no, I'm not saying physically doing anything here. I'm not saying you don't have to go empty up your bank account and give all of your money to the poor. You give of yourself, your, you could give of yourself time. You know, you, your time is energy. You know, you turn the word time backwards and you have emit. So you're emitting energy that way. You can give of your attention to a pet. You know, you can love on a pet and know and see that pet through the eyes of God and know that that pet loves you too. It is about the thought process. It is about the intention. It is about, you can go to the park and say hey to everything at the park, the trees, the grass, the rocks, the, you know, the birds. And you say, you are my favorite. I love you. I see you. That's what I'm talking about opening up the heart chakra to have love for all things, to see the good in all things, starting there, letting go of any, any grudges, seeing yourself as lovable, seeing yourself as a magnet and other people come and are drawn to you because they can feel the love that exudes from your heart. Knowing that when you go in a grocery store, you tell yourself and you, you make it Make give everything a meaning when people look at you just randomly at the red light or in the grocery store. Oh, he loves me. He feels my heart chakra open. This is all a mental thing here that I'm saying, you know, and um, I'm not saying go out because that's when you go out chasing and trying to do, 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 you're not being is what I'm saying here. So this is a state of being. You just be love. You just become love. That's it. You be a source of love and that automatically opens up the heart chakra. Some people like to throw in a little crystals and this and that and other, but guess what? God is the creator of those things. So you gotta always be the most powerful crystal that you'll ever own. You can go and get all kind of herbs and this and that and the third, but it is about what you do and what you are because life is happening through you. So you have to be that 
that that that vessel that love flows through in order for your heart chakra to be open in order for you to even begin to experience anything called love from what outside of you it has to be in you in order to get out there so we got to be in you for that person to, to um, receive it from you and then it's going to bounce back off of them back to you because it came from you that's what i'm talking here. and that opens up the heart chakra alone love i am lovable i am love they feel my love they feel my love they see my love i feel my love all of it is me there you go. <laughs> Green tea team. Oh, hi. Hi, Mr. Streak. Strikes B, I think I'm saying. Brown sugar, you are amazing. Oh, you are too, babe. You are too. You're a reflection of me. Let's see. Real talk queen. Hey, I've never seen this person. Da Daphne, is that? Daphne Clark Hudson. You okay? I read that. Well, these comments just rolled up really fast. Let me see if I can go back. Hello, hello, Justin. How are you, babe? The law of gender. It is say, simply stating there must be male and there must be female principles. That's pretty much the law. It's just letting you know. Even like with fruit, you know, like the watermelon. You know, they have the long watermelon and then they have the round watermelon, male and female. You know, like uh, um, peppers, you know, the bell peppers, they have the, I don't know what they call it, but like, you know how a bell pepper have like the little four little butts, kind of like? <laughs> well, they have some with the three butts at the bottom, you know, male and female. So even with people, male and female, with the animal, male and female, there must, but if you do individually, male and female, yin and yang energy, resonates inside of me already masculine and feminine energy is in me for men men have feminine and masculine energy and you know this to be true because it comes a pivotal moment in a man's life when okay when that testosterone is at his peak and he's younger he kind of like want to hit it and quit it maybe he kind of like into sports and he's really right he got that big truck that wake up everybody in the neighborhood and you got to get on a ladder to get in it just testosterone just masculine energy you get a little bit older though get over that 50 and then he's sitting down at the table you know reading his newspaper and his legs crossed and, and he's you know more in tune with the with the grandbabies he's more settled that testosterone kind of went a little down and he's more in his emotions he's more in his feelings he's more in his feminine energy women go through it too you know because <laughs> we all both have male and female principles inside of us based upon the law of gender let's see i'm seeing bees in my room bees are um conscious you're talking about a dream um of bees bees are really into a tool and con and conscious so i would look at that as um as a spiritual symbol and they take care of the queen bee <laughs> mm -hmm. amen amen brown sugar yes this is how i try to live daily you're speaking yes 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 try just don't yeah just do it just do it you are doing it you are doing this every day yes i like that that's a beautiful thing i enjoy how you bring it out okay i read that one already Okay, be one with the worst. Okay, let me see if I got some new things down here. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think. What is your zodiac sign? Do you believe in it? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, I believe, like, um, you know, personality traits. Like, I could see some, but I don't study it, so to speak. I went through that stage of my life already where I did I was into that but once you get to a certain place in your journey you let let go of all the little graven images or the little the call well I won't call it little no disrespect the cards and everything you let go of those things and I think I got some cards on this table that I don't use no more but nonetheless I'm um I'm an Aries fire leader see so um 
Yeah. I'm a um that's my sign, Aries. My birthday coming up. Actually, I don't even <laughs> I don't even celebrate birthdays no more either, but I just thought about it when I said um Aries. My birthday coming up. My birthday is maybe two weeks from, on the nineteenth. But yeah, I used to do the uh cards. I got some little cards sitting here still still in the box that I used to draw the little cards and all that, the crystals and yeah, I did all of that in my journey because I was on a journey of really getting to know myself. You know, I done did the altar with my ancestors. I done did dog magic. I done did, um, what else I did? I used to even make little, little jewelry and stuff, copper jewelry. And I done did it all. I done did all of the little religions. And, but now I just, I just believe in the, um, the energetic side of it. You know, the pe in, 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 uh, and most importantly, and it helps when I'm delivering messages to talk about energy, frequency, and vibration. Because I, as you think about it, if you think about it, and if I came here talking about Jesus or Buddha or Krishna or Dodo, whoever, you know, some people probably, you know, walk away because, you know, people, people have strong beliefs about their Lord and Savior or whatever they, you know, believe in. And, the, and religion already do that for to us, you know. Religion, you know, the, the, the Jehovah's Witness think they did a 144,000. They're going to be the only ones that's going to make it into heaven. And, you know, the Hebrew Israelites, you know, they think the black people and the tribes, they're going to be the only one and that we're going to, you know, have sex with the white people, wives, and do all that they did to us. You know, everybody wants their little religion to be the one that's going to win or make it to the kingdom. But if you talk about energy, frequency, and vibration, everybody understands that there. Everybody. And that and that's a place where you could get everybody in the room and be like, oh, I know what she's talking about. So yeah, food has energy, you know, you know, the higher frequency foods versus the meat and the potatoes, you know, guys, I could feel that because when I eat the heavy stuff, it, it kind of lowers my frequency, so to speak. I understand what she's saying. And even when I go to the doctor, you know, that's energy too, because you know, they, they're looking at my pH balance, my potential of hydrogen, and so they're running all, all my blood work and stuff, and, and they're looking at my numbers, my energy, my life force. Oh, Oh, okay, I understand the energy, the vibration of the music. Oh, I understand what she's talking about there. Everybody can relate. But then when you start throwing in all that religious stuff and passing the hat for somebody to be rich and everybody else suffering, I don't I don't subscribe to that no more. I came up in church and I, I've seen a lot of people leave the church or, or not be healed in the church or not feel welcomed in the church because of so many different beliefs and mindsets. But we could be, you know, all get together and talk about energy. And everybody go home, everybody, nobody feeling hurt or nothing. Now, sometimes the little um, Israelite people will come up in here and they'll be trying to throw in their little scriptures or whatever. Or they'll judge me based upon this here picture back here. When to me, this picture represents energy, you know, life, subconscious awakening all knowing infinite intelligence that everybody is really we all serving the same god we just expressing it different but the humans they don't want to they don't want to you know talk that kind of talk so i don't do all that extra <laughs> yes see let's see yes ma'am <laughs> throw out the church for real and we in the season where it's time for the church you know to kind of like you know be outdated because the truth is here you know this is the new age the age of awakening and a lot of the youth the, you know a lot of the um these new age children they don't want to hear nothing about no jesus they don't want to hear nothing about no church they don't want to hear it they ain't going <laughs> they go they don't want they because each each generation is really like we say our ancestors writing our wrong and so they they trying to get better and evolve higher that's really the purpose of us recreating life you know renewing life giving birth to other beings to come forth and do that part that we wasn't able seemingly to obtain in our lifetime Okay, love my island people. <laughs> she called me an island person. Um, NL, yeah. Oh, Sin City, yeah. So, sent the mic. Oh, okay, thank you, Sin City. Thank you for joining me again. How did you get out of dark magic cards and crystals? How? 
just because my rule when I came out of religion was the fact that um, I'm going to have this spiritual buoyancy, like, right? And um, that I actually, they used to preach about that in, in you know, revivals and in church. You know, I got spiritual buoyancy where I fall down and I bounce back up, like, right? So I knew that I was going out, like, seemingly amongst the wolves, exploring all these different aspects of religions and beliefs. And in my mind, I didn't want to sink in any of them. I wanted to be able to bounce back up and just have my own belief. I was going, in my mind, I wanted to get a little bit of this. I want to explore this here. Only because when I was in religion, they told me if I did these things that it would be, you know, the devil. That I, I, you know, and I was just taking the risk of going to hell because everybody in my family, nobody wanted to backslide. Everybody wanted to go to church and nobody wanted to ask why. And they just wanted to be on the straight and narrow, but straight and narrow didn't seem like, it, it seemed to me that there was something missing, you know, because I was a little girl in church all the time, seeing these people still hurting, nobody getting healed and this and that and other. And I was like, I don't want to be like these people. So when I get, get old enough to explore, I'm going to go in everything. And pull out that which I want and I'm going to spit the rest out. I ain't going to sink. I ain't going to subscribe to nothing. I ain't joining no during church. I don't want to join the seven day of business. No, I'm not joining. It's like once you once you get free from kind of like being bombarded with choir rehearsal and, and having to go on Sunday and then they have prayer and, and then you have to read your scriptures in Sunday school like I was and then your mama being a minister and your auntie being a pastor and your uncle being a pastor and your brother being a drummer and everything was church, church, church. I just wanted to just be a little girl <laughs> sometimes, you know. And so when I got to the place where I can do me, I wanted to explore everything. I was kind of like wilding out in spirituality with no fear at all. I'm talking about conjuring up energies and all. And I got out of it, back to your question, because I went long-winded on that. Sorry. But I got out of it when I realized, wait, hold up. We have this dark energy and this light energy. You know, they, they call it light workers and the dark magic. But a lot of the, you know, you, you could be a dark worker per se, but still kind of like do good per se, wish well, and, but you're still conjuring up these energies. But I was like, you know what? To me in my heart, I resonate more with the light instead of the darkness. So that's kind of why I got out of the cards and in the, 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 you know, the crystals and all. I, I wanted I wanted me to be myself to be the vessel. Like I wanted to pull from all of that and see what aspects of all of those religions was in me already. And so when I realized and came to the conclusion that ye are gods, that the kingdom lies within me and greater work shall I do, that I could evolve to a point where I could put the cards down and be tapped into my super consciousness and it downloads information. I don't need those things. You get to that place and you feel good about it. Like the cards, like, I mean, it's, it, I'll, I'll pull one. I'll pull one, but I could understand that it, it's just energy. I could think that thought already without having to pull one. Oh, I could get a crystal. I love crystals. I love new might. New might and amethyst is my favorite. But okay, amethyst is that's the purple one. That's the crown chakra. That's 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 the Christ consciousness. That's the royal priesthood. I'm already there. <laughs> so I don't really need amethyst. You see what I'm saying? So when you get to that place, like you just like. You can walk on water by yourself. You ain't Peter no more. You ain't sinking. You ain't you ain't fearful no more. You know when you done sat there and dealt with your your your, your demons per se that's in here, <laughs> and you done seen entities. You done you done you done levitated out the bed. You done had your lucid dream and you done you done been through hell already. Like what you need? You done been through everything burned anyway. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> So that's, that's just where I am. And I like to be in this here place. But I do love and respect the other things. And everybody is in a journey. But I'm just at a different place. I'm just at a different place. And I love this here place right here. Because it's a renewing of the mind. You, you We came forward with everything that we need here in the physical reality. We came forward with our crystals fluid in our soft spot in our head when we was a baby. And that's that's just our awakening, our juice, our Christ conscious juice that secretes in, in our body. That's our land that's flowing with milk and honey. We, we, everything, our love in here. 
our Christ consciousness in here. You know, the most powerful crystal is in here because it's your heart. That's the most powerful one, really. That's the one that has that electromagnetic form of energy around it that walks in the room before you even get there. You got it. You got the juice. Let's see. Uh, we are energy. Yes, yes, yes. Healing brings freedom. It really does. Hello, you better believe and teach. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's definitely again. Wow, great explanation. Thank you. Yeah, you need no thing. You really don't. You need no thing because when you realize that you are already no thing, it helps you understand more that you are everything. You're no thing and everything. The two sides all being God. No thing, everything. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Peace and love. Yeah, yeah. We are powerful and magical. Yeah, thought by thought. Choir, drama, greed. Oh my God, that's funny. That's funny, Daphne. That is so funny. Yes, once we get free, it's all over. Yeah, who the law sets free is free indeed. But I feel, going back to my notes, I feel like it was so important, so necessary for me to be in religion because it helped me in my journey because I always wanted to better understand that biblical text as a little girl at 12 years old in my closet when I was reading it over and over again. But the thing about it, it resonated with me. And I said to myself that I'm going to find out what this book is really talking about because I don't think what Pastor them saying is, is really this meaning. So I wanted to find out what it meant for me. And that's my truth. And I walk in that. And you we all have this internal GPS system inside of us. And it lets us know. It's like an indicator that lets us know based upon our emotions or our feelings. So anytime I went into like the Hebrew Israelites or whatever, and I didn't like what they were saying, something that they were saying, I had a feeling about it. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's going to be the part that I'm going to spit out. You know, when I explored, you know, seven day business or whatever and i didn't like something oh that's gonna be the point i'm gonna spit that out right there well, even the, the the jehovah witness oh you the only one you the 144 144 no 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 i'm gonna spit that out because i, I believe that god loves all because in my mind that the word was still in me he reigns on the just as well as the unjust so what make you the 144 and, and, and I'm not me. So that means I'm excluded because I didn't sign up to your, you know, Jehovah Witness program. So that means I'm not one of the 144. No, no, no. I beg to differ with you because as a little girl, I've always talked to this energy. I knew that there was a powerful form of energy that walked with me and talked with me and visited me in my dreams. So you got to be alive. So anytime you get to that place where it don't resonate with you, you get an emotion or whatever, that's that's your indicator. It's like, nah, don't, don't, don't go over there. <laughs> Don't 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 do that to yourself right there. We that that we 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 don't resonate with that kind of energy. And you keep on moving. But take that which is, you know, that resonates. No love loss. We all God. We are God, all connected like a spider web. Definitely. Our thoughts are connected, our behavior is all connected. When I move, you move. We are collective consciousness. Thank you. Hello, hot. Hot to try to. Well, all righty then. I like that name. <laughs> oh my God. Hot to try. Hot to try. That's funny. Okay, let's see. Hello, you better. Okay. All right. I think I covered everything. Let's see. What religion were you? Oh, we were non denominational. Um, kind of like, kind of like the Baptists, so to speak, but. They didn't have a name for it. So they did the, you know, the Holy Ghost, the shouting and all of that. We were, uh, my mom, she was like a Jehovah Witness at one point where we always had to wear our skirts and stuff, but we changed religions. So every time my mom would change religions, we pretty much had to do it, you know? And so that's why with my children, I tell them, well, I used to tell them rather like, look, you don't have to go to church if you don't want to, you know, you don't have to go to that kind of church. You could go to another kind of church. You could explore this, explore that, because I wanted them to have an open mind and be free to, you know, make their own decision and not be because mama had said, because that, that don't always be the right thing. You know, us as parents, sometimes we have to 
let that pride go that we do everything and we know better than our children. Our children just came in from infinite intelligence or knowing half of the time that don't be true. <laughs> half of the time them children be knowing way more than what we do on a spiritual level. Like we might have that wisdom of the physical, but we don't know everything. And I didn't want to be that type of mother for them to lead them. Even though I knew I was coming into something beautiful with sharing with them that they were gods and all and that, you know, in the physical reality, I still didn't even want to push that on them. I want them to discover it on their own. <laughs> Cause that forcing, you know, when you do, when you try to force your children into stuff like that, they normally repel. Look at me. <laughs> I was forced to go to church all the time. And I got to a point where I was like, I ain't speaking in that church. I don't want to talk to them people. No, no, no. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. And I ended up backsliding, getting out of that because it was forced. It was something that you got to do this. No, I don't. Not no more because I don't live with my mama no more. And so that was my attitude. But it was beautiful because it helped me stumble upon my, my calling, my purpose, and something that I'm in love with, a new um, way to live my life free for me and something that I can, you know, share with others, you know, even with my children. Because I call them gods. I call them gods in everyday conversation. Nice meeting you, queen. I have to run. Oh, thank you. I'm going to have to follow you after I get over here. If I don't already. Thanks for being here, Daphne. I appreciate you. I to try saying thank you. Okay, I think that I covered all of the... um questions on your children have to be awakened yeah i believe that a lot of them will all of them really come awaken and be and become uh sleep again <laughs> based upon the way that things are in the physical reality but some of them come in awaken and stay woke too you know everybody's a little different we're all serving the same god yes yeah, somebody say it yeah yeah t w a Wait up, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Let's see. I have seen the picture before. It really is powerful. It really is a powerful one. It does speak for itself. This picture here, I'm thinking you're talking about. Yeah, somebody came on here and didn't really care for it. They thought maybe it was, you know, I don't know, voodoo, hoodoo, whatever. But I don't see the problem with voodoo or hoodoo because. They only talking about a bunch of spells and and rituals in religion already. Anyway, you know, you know, drinking the blood, the blood of Jesus. They drink and you know, and on Sunday. So I don't know. Then they call. Then the call has new age. Yeah, new age. Yeah. Well, there's nothing new under the sun. So it's really the age coming back again, so to speak. It's really not new. There's nothing new under the sun. Do you believe in the Holy Ghost? I, uh, <laughs> the Holy Ghost, uh, as it pertains to the people in religion, I believe in the energy that they feel. And I do believe that they have some people that are really connected to super conscious, you know, infinite intelligence, God on here. I believe that. Um, but the Holy Ghost is just that. It's just you being in alignment with the super consciousness and so in the spiritual walk you call it maybe download because you hear this information and you just kind of like express it but sometimes you don't even hear sometimes it just flows through you energetically and i share with you all sometimes if you i'm sure y'all paying attention to me because i would if i were out there and some people probably out there judging me but you can tell for me, when I look back at my videos, I can tell when it is happening to me because I've done it before. When I start talking, when I start talking, this is equivalent to the so-called Holy Ghost that you've been talking about. When I start talking and it's just flowing to, through me and I just kind of like keep going and going and going and I'll, I'll say at the end of uh, whatever I was saying, I'll, I'll go like... That was good. That was the so-called Holy Ghost. Like that was me getting a download and me experiencing it, not knowing what I was going to say, where I got it from, 
that's kind of like the Holy Ghost, so to speak. The Holy Ghost is like you just tapped into this higher power, this knowing. And I've actually sat back afraid of myself in the beginning. Like, how did I know that? How did I know to say that? Where did I get that from? And the first time it happened to me years ago, I got um, hundreds of thousands of um, views. It, that was when I was on Facebook. I was talking about a solar eclipse when I was into that type of thing with the moons and and all and I was in the mall that day and it was, it was I never forget it was almost time for school to start it was the month of August and I was buying school supplies and school clothes for my boys and I was in the mall and I had this information that was just coming to me like you gotta say this you gotta say this you gotta say this it was like people per se like in my head telling me what to say like right and compelling me you gotta get out of here you gotta go live you gotta go live and i called my mom i was like i'm about to go live and i was like she was like what what you about to talk about i was like i don't know you just gotta just watch the live just watch the live i'm going live and i got on here and i was talking about numerology i was talking about the you know the universe the moon and i mean download central that had never happened to me at in it but at that point i didn't really understand you know, my, my, my calling and all this here, like I understand it now. It had never happened to me at that volume so intense. And on that particular live, that's on my YouTube channel too. On that particular live, after I finished, I was like, <gasps> I just had to tell y'all that. I had to tell y'all that. You know, because that's how burnt out I was and how many voices I was hearing. So it's different levels based upon where you are. You know, and I, in religion, I received prophets. I mean, prophecies from prophets who prophesied me being a speaker, me having the vehicle that I have and me, you know, being kind of, you know, like major and me traveling the world and all these different things. Me, you know, basically walking in my purpose. I believe in it, but I... Everything got two sides, is all I'm saying. Some of them, I, I believe some of those people are projecting. But the Holy Ghost itself, I do believe in it because it's really just your, the um, downloads from source energy. Throughout the church, need to do I, I see you. <laughs> okay, I love my, okay, I read all of that already. Let me see what they have at the bottom. If I missed your comment up there, I'm sorry, they went really, really fast. I tried to go back up there. We get our energy from the sun. Yeah. Were you kidding? You were getting a serious download. Yeah, that day I really was. Yeah, we get our energy um, from the sun. We get our energy from the moon too, though. You know? That that go back to the law of gender. They must be male. It must be female principle. So the, the sun is masculine energy. The moon is the feminine energy. So we still get in our energy from both you know we get in our energy from not just that though because we are limitless beings we get our energy from the plants you know we get our energy from <laughs> the earth we get energy from all things because we are connected to all things you know you get energy from water water is hydrogen and oxygen you know we get our energy from fire the fire within you know we get our energy everywhere you can draw energy from everywhere gorgeous you oh thank you kurt i appreciate that i manifested you thank you for your time and your beautiful energy oh charity oh that's nice yes you did you thought me up everybody in here thought me up pretty much that's how it go you powerful manifesto i like that nice meeting you queen i have to run okay pleasure okay so i think that's it and i read off everything from my notes and i just wanted to share that with you all that is all purposeful if you could just step back and look at the big picture and understand that all is god have the human experience you can go forward with this thing and your manifestations will come really really fast and you can feel powerful and immortal and your ascensions and jumping into parallel universes which is if it hasn't happened already it will happen for you because we just keep going and going for eons and eons so with that being said i'm going to end this because i have a consultation coming up
Oh, I gotta go. I got a consultation coming up in seven minutes. So this video was from my heart to yours. All your consultations over the phone. Yes, they are. You can visit my website at www.sortoftheearthpub.org. It's actually in my TikTok profile and they are over the phone, 30 minutes or an hour. If you ever need to reach out to me, I enjoyed this moment with you all. You be blessed and I'll see you guys on Monday at eight o'clock. Be blessed, babe, from my heart to yours.